video we will discuss the problem number of islands you are given a n value and m value basically n value indicates the number of rows and m value represents the number of columns in a 2d grid so basically you will be given m and you will be given n here okay this m will indicate uh, the number of rows and n will m will indicate the number of columns right uh, basically initially this 2d grid of size n cross m will be empty right you have been also given an array that is named as operations array which has uh, size k so what does this mean we'll look into it after following through the problem statement so the matrix uh, element is initially zero if it is if it is zero then it is water if it is one then it is marked as land so basically in this if suppose that you have a particular grid okay and if you have a zero there so this means that it will indicate that at that particular cell we have a we have water and if at a particular cell we have one so it indicates that that particular cell is land now what we have to do in this particular problem is we have to count the number of islands that will be there inside this matrix which will be originally having all the water present that is all the cells will be zero in this particular given matrix and after each operation that is performed in this particular given matrix we have to identify how many islands are there so let's quickly see so initially like suppose that we have been given suppose that we are given a matrix and we are asked to identify the number of islands in their particular matrix so suppose a matrix is given like this like one one is there zero 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 suppose zero is there zero is here zero is here suppose one is here we have zero here zero here zero here and suppose we have one here zero here zero here so if we are asked to identify the number of islands so island is what island is connected components we can see that this is one island right this is the second island this is the third island right there are total three islands like suppose that if we had one here right suppose that we had a one here suppose that we had a one here so in this case we can simply say that this is the second island right this is the third island so total three islands are there inside this grid right how can we find this so basically we know that for finding the number of islands we can use the concept of number of connected components inside a matrix or inside a graph right now what does this problem say so initially as you can see that in this particular uh, in the given matrix the matrix that will be given so, so let's quickly see the sample test case so suppose we have been given n is equal to 4 and m is equal to 5 okay suppose we have been given n is equal to 4 and m is equal to 5 so suppose we have been given this particular thing here okay if this particular thing has been given to us one uh, let's say that uh, we have four rows so one two three rows right and uh, basically four rows we have and we have five columns so one two three and four right so one two three four five columns we are having let's mark the indexes zero one two three let's mark the indexes zero one two three four right now every cell initially will be given as zero this will be 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 zero all the cells initially will be marked as zero and we have been given an operations array now in this operations array what will be given is will be given an operations array right and in that particular operations array will will be given uh, two values like every value will have a pair right we can see here let's quickly copy the sample test case here so we will see here so what we have been given here is we have been given uh, one comma one right and then we have been given zero comma one then we have been given three comma three right and after that we have been given three comma four right these are the things that we have been given so basically we can observe this particular thing here that initially it is said that one comma one one is marked as one and when one comma one cell so which is cell one comma one we can say that this particular cell is one comma one so we'll simply mark it as one and now we have to identify that how many in this updated grid in this new updated grid what is the number of islands so we can simply say that the number of uh, islands after this particular operation is what we can simply in this particular grid we can apply the concept of counting the number of connected components in a grid uh, by moving in four directions right because island will be defined by moving in four directions so we can simply apply a dfs on this uh, by creating a copy of this original matrix or uh, of this current matrix and we can simply count the number of connected components so we can observe that the number of connected components will be one after this we will uh, go to the next operation so 0 comma 1 is there right so 0 comma 1 will be marked as 1 so when we have 0 and we have 1 so this will be marked as 1 right let me check that as well so we have 0 comma 1 uh, yeah so if we will mark this as 1 right now how many islands are there still there is only one island because if you will observe 
so this is one connected component itself right these two are not different connected components so still the number of islands is one so again we can do what we can uh, create a copy of this particular grid and then we can run a dfs to count the number of connected components in a grid uh, in four directions by moving in four directions at most right after this what we'll do is we'll move to the next uh, next operation so we can see that three comma three is marked as one so three comma three is somewhere here right so we'll mark it as one so we'll mark it as one then after this what we'll observe is uh, uh, we can say that how many connected components are there now how many uh, different connected components are there so basically we have two different connected components right so we'll mark this as uh, two because there are two islands now right after this if we will observe then we'll have three comma four right when we have three comma four so for three comma four uh, we can say that this is the cell three comma four right now again we'll mark it as one right so now what happens let's check that as well if they are marked the right cell or not so you can see that it is marked as one comma one right so after this we can observe that this particular cell uh, this particular part is also one connected component so still the number of uh, islands is two because we can uh, on this particular grid we can apply the dfs call and we can find the number of connected components right the so in the end what we have to return is we have to return a vector that consists of one comma two comma two uh, comma two that is basically uh, after every operation what is the number of islands that are there in the updated grid right that is what we have to do so what we can do here is let's uh, let's look at the code how we'll code it so what we'll have is first of all we'll have the grid of n cross m size initially everything will be marked as zero then we'll create a result a resultant array list or resultant vector for returning the number of islands uh, number of islands after every operation then we'll iterate through this operations array and we'll simply mark that particular cell as one then we'll create a copy uh, copy grid right uh, or you can mark it as something like new grid right basically what we will do is we'll basically have this particular uh, grid and we'll run a dfs on this particular new grid otherwise we'll, if we'll run it on the same grid in that case what will basically happen is our uh, our original grid uh, will get uh, changed because original grid will be marked as zero after the operation because after the dfs call because uh, if we'll be marking it as zero so it will reflect so that is why we'll create a new grid so that there is no change made to the original grid right original current uh, grid so we'll mark the answer as one number of connected components for this particular grid as one we'll iterate through all the cells and if it is one then for that particular connected component we'll call the dfs call and when we call the dfs call suppose that this is the current grid so when we'll call the dfs call for this particular grid so suppose this is one then in that case all the cells connected to the connected uh, to this particular uh, one they will be visited so basically we can say that this particular portion will be visited okay and it will be counted as one connected component and this will be marked as zero this will be marked as zero right you can see here that's what we are doing right here so after this uh, all the connected components will be counted it's uh, and then we'll store the result uh, and a resultant a number of com connected components in the current after the current operation and then we'll uh, simply return the answer so you can see that we have we are simply running a dfs in which we are passing the current row current column uh, and we are passing the grid right the new grid no uh, the copy grid not the original grid then if uh, we are falling out of the grid from the left side upper side downward side or the rightward side or if it happens that the grid is zero right uh, if that particular cell is zero then we'll simply return otherwise if that grid is uh, grid cell is one so we'll mark it as zero so that we do not visit it again otherwise uh, we might fall into an infinite recursion and simply we'll call the dfs in all the four directions so that is how we can count the number of connected components uh, in a grid okay so if you understood this problem make sure to hit the like button comment down understood as well thank you for watching this video